All right, everybody. We are live. Everybody hearing me? I know it's going to take a second for the chat to do it. Yes, I have a beard, see? I've grown some facial hair in the time since my last 52 tips video. What do you think? Good? And a little bit of hair up here, too. Yes. And you have to appreciate the nice hipster t-shirt or anti-hipster t-shirt, yes. Okay, so um, we're going to have some fun here today. I've got uh, a few topics that I'm going to cover. And uh, you know what? Let me move this to be a little bit more comfortable here. That's a little bit better. Right, so um, there were a number of topics that you guys sent from the Facebook page and also from the um, Propellerhead forums as well. And I had to pick and choose through them. Um, are you guys, everyone getting an echo? I see someone here saying that I have an echo, but I don't see why you should. Shouldn't be in an echo, any echo there. No echo, okay, yeah, so we're good. All right, so um, Ryan is actually off tonight. Uh, I figured I can do this on my own and give him a night off because the poor guy has been working like a dog here for the better part of a month. So I'm going to take the uh, take the head of this session here. Um, so I'm not going to necessarily be able to answer all of your questions in chat because I'm going to be doing my stuff here on the screen and also try to keep a little bit of uh, <coughs> an eye on the chat window here. So. Let's have a look and see the first suggestion that I had, and this was actually from a few people, um, which was to, they wanted me to show how to get Noisia style beats. Um, and if you're not familiar with Noisia, they, they are, well they used to, they were a drum and bass uh, trio, and uh, I believe they're from the Netherlands. And they started out doing drum and bass tracks, and then they, actually went on to more recently do a bunch of dubstep stuff but um, they have a very distinct sort of sound to their drums and, uh, and their bass sounds as well and someone was asking how to recreate their type their drum sounds and so I actually had to uh, refer to my good friend Chris Petty on this one um, because he's a he's a big noisia fanatic and I figured if anyone here could uh, at least give me the basic or give me the beats or the, uh, some ideas of where to start from, um, it would be Chris. And so Chris Petty did provide me with a few beats here. And let's uh, just uh, let me move over to allow you to see what I'm seeing here. All right, you guys see that there? It's a little 3D window, something a little, a little different, a little bit of spice. All right, so here's an example, and this is going to be a beat without any of the effects applied. Uh, so this is going to be more along the styles of a, a drum and bass kind of thing. All right, so let's let's go it over to, uh, hang on. There we go. So now you can just see what I'm looking at here. All right, so let's have a look and see what's done here. So, as you can see here, none of this has been applied yet, but uh, Chris, being the madman that he is, uh, gave me a good head start here and actually did a fair amount of things for me. But the concept of what it is, is basically you're, take, you're taking the drum sounds and you process each separate sound individually. So if you look down here, and we'll just go down to this Kong that he's got here, and you're using the separate outputs on each one of the Kong's breakouts there. And if you're not familiar with how to do this, and let's look over here, if you're not familiar with how to select those individual outputs, when you select a pad, let's say the kick for example, and you look down here where it says drum output, and we'll just zoom in so you guys can see. So to see that drum output there? That's where you could select what set of outputs it's going to. So right now we just got it on main output left and right. So as I zoom back out, then you can see that those drums are going to come out of the main left and right. Now if we look at the snare, snare is coming out of its own set of outputs as well. So 
flipping the rack around again, that's how you can access these outputs. And then what we've got is each one of those is going to its own separate mix channel. And in each mix, tra mix uh, excuse me, in each mix channel here, we've got a fair amount of processing that's going on. But you can't hear that yet, so I'm gonna, let me do this, uh, and we'll play the beat again and we'll solo out some tracks. So we'll start with the kick here. So there's a kick without any processing at all. Um, and that will bring in with the processing that's been done. And, and from what you can see here, it's been run through a scream distortion. And let's try and uh, make these cables not quite so cluttered. So we'll just look at that by hitting K. So if you can see the first, the output of the kick is going into the first scream and then on to the second scream and the third scream and then back on up. So what we've got here, we'll, we'll engage it. So we can hear that kick pretty heavy. Um, and what we've got here is a distortion then running in through a digital lo-fi. Um, so we can kind of grunge it up just a touch. And then run through a tape saturation. So again, without the effect, and then with it, and again, we'll listen with the rest of the set, rest of the kit here. All right, and let me bring in the rest of these so you can hear what it sounds like. And we're just taking all these channels off bypass. So let's look at that snare that's happening here. Let's look at that one as well. And you can see the snare parts right here. So again, that one's hitting pretty hard, and it's a, a drum and bass snare, and he's got it, again, going through a pretty fair amount of processing. So we'll look at the rack here. And again, going through some distortion, a little bit of lo-fi again, and also some tape saturation. And I believe, essentially, you repeat the process on every single individual part. And that gives you that really saturated sound. So what you're essentially looking to do is really saturate each part, each individual drum sample. And that gives you that really present sort of sound, right? So again, there it is with it. And we'll bypass it. So this is batch bypassing all the saturation now. So big difference, as you can hear. All right, so that's that's one example, and that's uh, more of the drum and bass type stuff. Now I'm going to go through, and we won't save that because I've got that saved. Uh, let's look at a dubstep type thing. Uh, first, let me make sure that you guys are all hearing me okay here. Everyone hearing me all right in the chat? You know what? I need to refresh because... Okay, good. All right, so here's a dubstep type beat. And again, what we'll do is listen to just the beat without anything. Now on this particular beat, um, as Chris pointed out, a lot of what it is that they're doing is uh, eighth note triplets on the hat. And that gives it that sort of really pushed, sort of really swung or swingy type of a feeling here. Um, so, and again, now, what you're hearing right now is without any of the processing done. So this is just the raw beat. And when we again look at the mix channels, and we'll start with a kick. As you can hear, again, really punchy and present. And we'll just stop there. So there's that kick. You can hear really, really hitting pretty hard there. So when we look at the actual kick track, We'll go back up to the top here. And this particular kick, we are running through a lo-fi and then again through a saturation, um, tape saturation, with a fair amount of damage control, actually. It's up more than uh, a quarter of the way, so we're, we're really starting to get into that saturation. All right, and so let's hear what it sounds like on, on the rest of the sounds. All 
All right, so really, really punchy sort of sounds going on. But let me check something here. All right, so as any dubstep tune wouldn't be complete without some bass in here. So other than covering the, the drums themselves, and again, that way that you can get that really sort of saturated sound is by running each individual part or each individual output of Kong through its own separate scream saturation and maybe a little bit of distortion and, and some lo-fi. Excuse me, I need to take a little Guinness break here. Cheers. So, no dubstep tune would be complete without some bass obviously. So what we're going to do here is have a look at the sequencer and let's have a look, or let's just solo out the noises track that I've got here and give you a little example of what those sound like here for, and we'll break that down. <laughs> And just for fun, bringing the beat. All right, now let me uh, let me switch back over to just the screen so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so let's look at these samples that we've got going on. And um, on the rack, you can see, when I look at that, I've got it in an NNXT, and it's called Noises. And you can see that they're actually, it's samples. But I created the samples inside of Reason. So these are not external samples. It's not using some other synth. It's using... Thor, actually, is what I've used to, to create these samples. Um, and I'll give you, here's, um, the Thor is actually still in the session. And I'll show you. You can hear the samples first. Uh, we'll go down here and zoom down, because I think I have the first sample is pretty low, so. And I can play that up on the keyboard. And then the second sample starts about here. And since it's a sample, um, I, I did the original sound sync to tempo. And, it, and since it's a sample, as you play it higher or lower on the, keypo, on the keyboard off of the root note, what you're going to wind up getting is, is the sound's going to change in speed. So the original is there. So as I play higher on the keyboard, the sample actually changes in speed. Um, we'll go up another octave here. And that's another sample, and then the, the last one is... So let me give you an example. I mean, I, I played these sounds, but I'll show you how we created them and then sampled them. So what I did is inside this Thor that's right over here, I've got my Thor... And let me make sure I'm actually playing that track. So we're going to solo that down here. All right. And that's this. And we'll turn our... All right. So the first sound actually was a couple of bass sounds. Let's see where I put those. I put them in here. There's the noise of bass. So, so the bass, I wanted to get that sort of pitch down thing. And what I did to get that sort of pitch change that's happening is if you look here, I've got the LFO is doing the wobble, um, controlling the frequency on a bandpass filter. And I've got the mod envelope here. As you can see, I'll zoom in, you can see the mod envelope here is actually set to change the pitch of oscillator 1, 2, and 3. And I'm using the mod envelope, it is synced to tempo. And I've got that changing the pitch from, that's a, a 33 is roughly about an octave up, 
or so. Oh, maybe a little bit less than an octave up. Um, and so I'm using the mod envelope there to do the pitch change on that sound. And and it's all, since I'm using three oscillators on this sound, I needed to repeat that that parameter or that function. Um, I could have used that source and had two different destinations over here if I wanted to by having the mod envelope as the source and then two of the oscillators as destinations there, but I don't know, I wanted to make things a little bit more difficult for myself. So all I did is I, I wanted to just sample this sound, just that one. That's uh, that particular sound. So what I did is I took the output of Thor, the actual audio output, and ran it into the sampling input here. And then what I did is, and for this I'll just create a new NNXT because I don't want to mess up the one that we have. So we'll just create a new NNXT. All right, and just move this guy there. And we'll just open up the NNXT. And when I hit sample, I mean, I can play the key. I'll make sure that we're actually selected on the track that is triggering the Thor, which it is. And also make sure that you have sampling monitor on, otherwise you wouldn't hear it because you routed the direct out of the Thor into the sampling input. So if I play it now, you hear, but if I turn monitoring off, I mean, you see it's, it's sampling, but I'm not getting any input there. So we'll turn our monitor on and we'll go down to that NNXT that we just created over here. And all I did was just hit sample, hit edit, and then we've got our sample there, I just normalize it, listen to it. And then probably, you know, chop off somewhere in here or so with sample start transients off, just to kind of get it close and then I would probably get a click there but I'll crop it and I'll just look at the end here maybe zoom in a touch and just do a quick fade out there so we don't get a click so now there's our sample and we you know I just named it whatever base one so now on this NNXT if I go back in and look at that NXT here, and we'll just solo that out, go back to the rack. When I play the keyboard on this NXT, and we're actually way low. All right, so now we've got that sample, and we can do some pretty interesting stuff with it. Once it's a sample, um, we can have it and map it out to different keys. We can take sections and loop sections. So if we wanted to do, uh, a lot of times Noisia will do something where they'll let a, a, a sample or a loop play, and then they'll actually take that and take a section and loop a little quick section of it. So we'll just go look back at the eb edit of the sample itself. So let's say we wanted to take something and get it, make it sound like a real, like it's stuck or froze. So I'll say we'll play it. I will do section right here, maybe, and we'll just say set loop. All right, or maybe we want to go something a little bit less there and do a crossfade. You know, so that kind of a thing would be fun to do where they'll, they might let the loop play out and then have it freeze on a particular, particular moment. Um, all right, so that's, that's essentially what I did. I mean, that's, that's what you see here is I've got triplet bass, bass two, lead one, and then angry. And that's all I did was I went in and just, I didn't think about making patches that I would be able to play in the song. I spent, I don't know, about 30 minutes or so making a sound and then just sampled that sound and, and used that sound as a source or a sample within NXT. Um, so it's a really fun way of kind of creating because you're not necessarily thinking of creating this patch that's just playable all across the keyboard. You just, it's like you're sampling from a record, but you're the record, right? You're, you're the one that made the sound. Um, so it's a really cool way of kind of building up your sound library of like single one-shot hits or, or wobble loops and things like that. Um, all right, let me go over here so you guys can see me for a second. Oh, while well, I'm taking a drink. 
And yes, for anyone that's um, joined the chat uh, late here, um, yes, I have a beard. Hi. <laughs> there I am. I don't even actually know how many people do we have here. I can't see that right now. What are we looking at? I don't know how many viewers we have because my computer is acting very slow when it comes to the chat. And uh, I think a, pu a couple of people here have mentioned uh, on the chat that, no, I'm not, I'm not taking a lot of questions because I'm actually, I'm doing it all tonight. Um, I gave Ryan, I wanted to have Ryan have the night off tonight. So I'm doing the entire presentation, um, both the session and, um, and the actual uh, screen share. So it's, t it's pretty difficult for me to actually look at the chat and keep an eye on what I'm doing and, and you know, I have a hard time multitasking when it comes to that. But I might take one uh, as I go on here. Um, the, the good idea, a good thing is though, um, don't do it in all caps because I will definitely ignore you um, if you do all caps. Only thing I want to see in caps is the word question. All right, so let's go on with this. So, so just kind of to wrap this sucker up, We'll go back into the rack here, and we'll just unsolo. Uh, mute that guy out. Mute that guy out. And so this is this is kind of what we've got going on here. And then and I'll sort of A B without the effects. Turn off the click because we don't need that. And again, we'll bypass the effects. I mean, as you can hear, oh, I didn't even bring in the noises effect. This is everything. I think I might be flipping at this point. Alright, so, yeah. That's a little bit about of how to do uh, noisia. So let me um, hang on a sec here. Let's get this back onto the screen. Okay. So, what's next on my list? Uh, let's see here. I think the next thing I wanted to talk about da, 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 was uh, so many things to do. I think blocks. Um, there were a number of requests for blocks and things to do. Fun ways that you can use blocks. So let me uh, go into a file here, and I think I might have something already uh, prepared here. So there's a couple of ideas and ways that you could use blocks. Um, the first one will go to this one. All right, we'll close this guy out because we don't need that anymore. And all right, so I've got a loop here. The loop which spawned a million songs. Uh, Winston's Amen, My Brother. So, uh, and some of you, if you're Square Pusher fans, then you would hear it way the hell up here, probably around, oh, maybe not 200 unless he's really on crack, but... Uh, uh, 180s or so, you know. Alright, but we're not going to go there because I have not had that much coffee today. So we're going to go about 135-ish, I'd say. Um, Alright, so, yeah, and I know some people might say you're kind of tired out of it, but this is just an example of, of what's some things that you can do with blocks. Now, as you can see, what I've got is it's in a block. So if I go in the block mode, it's an audio track. I loaded in an audio loop, and I had it synced up to tempo and chopped up. So it's just a simple block of an audio track here. And what I'm going to do is back in the song mode, um, this is a, a, it's only a three bar loop actually. And what I'm going to do is chop it up a bit and chop the block up and show you some things that you can do um, where you can actually use the blocks as if you're doing sample editing 
on on the original sample, but it's kind of a fun way to do it because you can you're not changing the original sample in any way. So we're gonna take this and copy and repeat this over here. So we have it going into the proper loop. And then here I'm gonna chop up, let's say we'll zoom in a little tighter. And then we'll chop up, uh, I don't know, that guy. That guy, that guy. So that last quarter note, I'm gonna just take that and we're gonna repeat that guy. So we just copy, paste, paste. And you know, if you just wanted to hear what a certain block sounded like, let's say I wanted to hear what this section is gonna sound like really quickly without having to go in and, and you know, do my left, right loop markers. I can just shift, click on both of those and hit P. And it's just gonna loop that section, right? But now maybe I wanna do that. So. And now I want to just add this one in. All right, so we got that little section. And then right here, I want to chop up that first one. And we'll come out, I don't know, right about there or so. And we're going to repeat that one a few times. And what I'm doing is I'm using offset. So I'm, I'm triggering the block here from the beginning. As you can see, I'm just basically re-triggering that block. And then I'm offsetting this block by a certain amount. And you can see there, I mean, if you wanted to get all technical, you could go in and, and type in your block offsets using the inspector. But I tend to be more visual when I do this kind of editing. Um, we'll just turn the loop off for a section for a second here. And so we got kind of something like this now. All right, so we're just having some fun sort of mangling and playing around with blocks. And this, this actually applies to both audio and MIDI. Um, we could do this with MIDI as well, where we could chop up sections and repeat sections or offset sections. Um, the only thing to be aware of when you're doing it with MIDI is that with MIDI, if you were to chop a block sort of midway through a note, that's being played, um, you're not gonna hear that note get re-triggered because that, it doesn't do MIDI chasing. So it has to be chopped on the start or the MIDI start. Okay, so let's go to, actually, you know what? Let me go to back to full screen because I think, um, yeah, I did leave it in the 3D here. So, all right, that better guys? Okay, so that was one example of, of using blocks to sort of mangle or chop up a loop. Another one is this example. This is a song I have here. And some of you may have heard this tune. Um, this is a sort of an acid electro tune I did. I actually used, um, I used Kurt's Kong 808 refill as uh, the the majority of the sounds in this actually all the all the drum sounds the only thing that's not a Kong 808 in this there's two sounds it's uh, three or threes which are not sampled they're actually using the Doctor Distortion um, transistor patch um, the latest version that has the sequencer and whatnot and. Also, there's this string, and the string is something I sampled from my Matrix um, 1000. Uh, it's a little refill that I had planned at some point to put out, but I never really did. Um, so it only has about like 40 or 50 patches or something in that. I used um, a program called Sample It to sample individual notes off of it. Uh, and um, so, all right, enough talk. But here's what it it's, uh, sounds like. And you can look at the song. So. This is an example of blocks and how you could use blocks to riff off or complete, cre create a complete song out of nothing more than one block. Actually, this whole song that I've got going here, and um, you can hear when I get further in here, let's see where the 303 start to come in, and that is right about 
here. The, um, the transistor bass, as you can see there, it's using all fours. We'll solo that guy out. So, um, what I wanted to talk about with this is how the entire song is actually nothing more than one block. This is the whole song as a 16 bar loop. Um, and all I've done is for the entire song, just gone in and used the, the mutes. So the ability to mute clips within a block, I've used that as a way to arrange the song. And it's sort of like going back to, for me, with, with this song, um, it was sort of, going back to the old school way of when I used to write with nothing more than uh, 303, 606, and, you know, maybe a 101, and everything was just nothing more than um, an 8 or 16 bar loop, and I was, the arrangements were just muting and unmuting on the uh, mixing channel, on the mixing board. Uh, it kind of a funny story too. I had a label that re-released some of my old work, something I'd done back in like '93, and um, and, w and when they wanted to release the record, they asked me for the stems, and I had sent them obviously the the, the masters, you know, the, the finished mixes, and they asked me for the stems, and and I told them they had the stems um, because I didn't have stems back then. <laughs> I had a dat machine and i recorded everything live to dat actually the entire album uh, there's an album i released called um atmospherics and the majority of that album was actually done live um I, the songs were nothing more than 16 bar loops and all i did was mute and unmute parts on both my mixer and also at the time i was using a corgo and w sequencer and i was muting and unmuting the midi tracks on the sequencer and muting and unmuting tracks on um, a Mackie 1402, I believe it was, mixer with, uh, at the time. So, how far we have come from. <laughs> Back then, everything was all hardware and took forever to get something. But So this is what I wanted to do, is I wanted to get the vibe of taking a song from back in the day which is an idea of a 16-bar loop and doing the mutes and unmutes. So when I look at the at the actual song here, if I get out of block edit mode, so this is the block, right? So this is the whole block is everything playing. And when you go back into the actual song, you can see that the song has all of these different parts that are sort of grayed out or, or different patterns and all it is is that same 16 bar loop as you can see up here at the top it's that same block just repeated and what I've done at certain points is actually cut into the block so I can mute parts so because if I were to try and go here let's say for this one and I just wanted to mute out this particular part right there I couldn't mute that. If I, I use the mute tool, which is this tool right here, if I tried to mute that one, see what it does is it mutes out the entire block. But if I just wanted to take that one section and mute it, I would actually just slice the block up right here. And now when I use the mute tool, I can unmute or mute just those parts. So I can just say, oh, I just want to mute that. And that could apply across all of the tracks, or I can just mute those. So that's, that's the technique that I used with this song, which was the sort of mutes and unmutes, and, and to come up with that old school sort of vibe. And this was the way that I could have the patterns come in and out, because on this particular combinator that's playing the 303 sound, um, yeah, the parts were, were matrix parts, and I wanted them to come in and out. So I used the mutes to, to bring them in and out there. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a different way of using blocks. Um, 
you know, I'd never, I didn't do the whole, you know, there's no, there's no intro, outro, verse, or any of that here. It's just one thing, the main sort of acid line. Um, yeah, so that was, that was sort of the concept with that one. All right, so let me um, have a look-see at my little list here. Um, and also let me look here at the chat, see if anyone is not seeing me or if you guys are seeing me. And uh, yes, uh, some people ask uh, where I'm from. I am from New York. Uh, I was born in Jackson Heights, Queens. And <clears throat> depending on how much alcohol I've consumed, uh, my New York accent tends to come out a bit more. Um, yeah, so if you give me a lot of whiskey, I tend to get all Brooklyn on you. You know what I'm. But uh, it, <laughs> most of the time, it's not that it's not that pronounced. Um, and actually, the rest of my family is from Long Island. And no offense to anyone on Long Island, but thank God I did not get the Long Island accent. Um, the rest of my family has it. So, but I don't. I tend to have more of a Queens Brooklyn accent. Um, and yes, that is Guinness on my lips. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, Long Island is how you say it, I, I guess, is the proper way of saying it. All right. So the next thing I wanted to look at here, uh, let's see my list. We had a couple of people ask about groove templates and how to create a custom groove template. Um, I think there was a few people that asked that one. And, and so that one I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you. And we're talking about regroove here. Um, so if you've never, <laughs> if you never used it, we introduced it um, back in Reason version three. And that's the regroove mixer, uh, where you can have up to 32 different grooves to choose from in a song. Uh, not that I would ever suggest that you use 32 different grooves in a song. Uh, I think the maximum I've ever used is like two or three in a tune. Um, but you have a lot there just in case. So how do you create one? Um, that's the question. So what I'm gonna do is let's go, we'll just start from scratch here. And just in interest of time, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to use an Octorex and we're going to use a, a loop uh, to give you uh, an, an idea. So we'll go to the Dr. Octorex and I'm just going to load up something that has some sort of swing on it. Uh, and actually this might be cool. So let's take something in here. So that's got a, a fair amount of swing in it. Yeah, we'll take that one. And I'm going to lower the tempo because it is way too fast for this loop. So we'll go to like 105 or so. All right, so. I even think that's still a little too fast. So let's go to 100. All right, so that's got, a, that's got a good swing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this loop and put it to the track. So we'll just use this copy loop to track function. Um, hopefully that you know how to do that by now. If you don't, you just learned. So what that does is it actually takes the slices that are in that Rex loop and it puts it down to the track and it just repeats it for every section inside the left and right locator. So if it's a one bar loop like this one was, then it'll repeat that um, every bar. If it was a four bar loop, it repeated it twice, you know, so on and so on. Um, one thing to remember when you do this is that if you're going to copy the loop and the notes to slot, make sure that you turn this little button right here, which says enable loop playback, turn that off. If you do not, you will get some serious flanging and that would sound like this. which I kind of like, and it's kind of a cool effect, but um, uh, 
<laughs> it's not useful because if you were to then turn the, the slices off at some point in the song, you're going to still have the loop playing back. So we want to uh, disable the loop playback there. And now we're just hearing that loop. All right. All right. Now, what I am going to do now is extract the groove from this. And so what I'm going to do is it's so you can hear what happens. So let's just go and create a, a redrum or a red drum, I guess is the proper way of saying it. And we'll just load in some kit. I don't know. Let's go with disco. I'm feeling like a disco mood here. So we're just going to program in some sort of a red drum pattern. We'll just like, you know, here, there, there, that. Uh, we'll do a snares there, and then maybe a soft ghosted snare there. Uh, we'll do some hats, blah, whatever, like that. Uh, maybe a couple of harder hits in there. All right, so we've got this running. All right, so really, really white bread beat there. That's fine for me for now. So what I'm going to do is then take that beat, and I want to apply regroove to that beat. Um, if you've ever tried the regroove mixer on a redrum or a red drum, and you go like this and try to load in one of your channels and you don't hear it, that is because on pattern-based devices, you can't apply a, re a, re a regroove template because they are pattern based and they are on a 16 step grid and there's no way to apply the regroove template to that pattern. It actually has to be notes that exist in a track. So the regroove template or the regroove mixer only works on MIDI notes that are sequenced in a track. So we just got to basically right click on this redrum or red drum and we'll say copy pattern to track. And now we've got that pattern there. And then again, just like we did before, turn this guy off. Um, because if we don't, then we will get that lovely flanging sound that we heard before. You hear that? All right, but if we turn it off, both the uh, enable pattern selection, now we're just getting that. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually want, I want to take this loop that has a real kind of groovy swing funk to it. All right, so that's got a lot more swing and funk to it. And what I want to do is extract the groove from that and apply it to here. So it's actually pretty simple. What you do is you right click on it, on that clip, if it's a one bar or a two bar or what have you, you just go get groove from clip. And once you do that, what happens is it automatically puts it into the first user slot in the regroove mixer um, and it's just there and, and ready to go now it's going to have this regroove and all it's going to all it's going to have here is just the groove there's nothing like ve velocity or anything like that that actually isn't included so if we look at the actual loop itself and we'll just close out the regroove mixer here for a second and look at the look at the loop you can see that right there there's, there's no velocity, right? It's just at a straight s middle of the road, right? So it's just that 64 velocity. So if I wanted some things where like maybe on the snare, on that snare, that first one, I want it to be a little bit harder velocity, I could program that in. And then maybe on that second snare. So that just makes those snares a little bit higher in velocity. I'm just drawing these in. Um, the way that you quickly get the pencil tool when you're in the edit mode is by holding down the command key on Apple. And I know, I think, uh, is it Alt? <laughs> I forget. Control. I think it's Control on Windows. Um, all right, so we got that. Or we can just a lot. We could just randomize it if we wanted to just be completely random. But you know, that's up to you. Now I'm going to go and get the groove again because now it's going to have velocity information in it. And so now it's got it in user bank number two. Thank you, a boogeyman um, control it is. So 
Now I've got it in user two. Now the one thing is that you know you, you see it here, and this this if you've never used regroove, this is your amount, how much that groove will be applied. Um, you can slide the notes forward or backward a few ticks to make it either rushing the beat or lagging in the beat. And then you can also apply this global shuffle. Uh, to me, I usually don't because you know take a groove and then shuffle the groove. It's, it tends to get kind of kind of wacky. Um, but the other thing is that you can actually edit it. So when you go into edit mode, you actually have this place in the tool window. And I'm not sure how many of you have actually gone in here and done this before. But when you do this, you actually, in the tool window, when you go into the groove edit, you can look at the groove patch that you've just loaded or the groove that you've just extracted. And you can adjust things like how intense the timing is going to be. 100% is going to be exactly what you hear. You can actually go more than 100%, so you can really force the, the feel or the groove on something. Velocity impact as well. And then you can do things like note, like note length impact or random timing to give it a little bit of a, a human feel. All right, so we'll do that. And now we're gonna listen to this redrum or red drum pattern with that user groove, which of course, you know, you can save that, so it doesn't have to stay as user. I can say, you know, JB Funky thing, uh, not all caps. I don't want to scream at myself. Um, so there's my JB Funky groove, all right? So there's that. And now we're going to listen to our redrum or red drum pattern with the groove. First, we'll take it off. So that's no groove applied. And there it is with the groove. All right, so we've taken that sort of really standard beat, which I made here. All right, so there's my, there's my white bread beat. <laughs> and now uh, I'll take it and go back. I'm going to loop that, obviously. And now we're hearing the groove. And we'll bring that with the other beat. So those are the two that are layered on top of each other. And you can hear that now that everything's hitting in a good way. Um, you know, my programmed beat is hitting exactly on with the loop beat that I took. Um, I'm going to also show you how extreme you can get when you go into the edit mode. So let's say we wanted to really have that timing impact. If we go 200%, it really, it kind of really wax things out. So I tend to not go that high, but maybe just a touch more than 100% on both velocity and timing, and then a little bit of random in there to give it that sort of human feel. And now, you know, remember that regroove, uh, the regroove can be applied to more than just drums. I mean, let's say we went in and, and just created, um, I don't know, let's go and take our trusty old subtractor and create a, a matrix. And we'll just, now I'm just gonna go total random. So we're just gonna go and randomize a pattern here um, and see what, <laughs> That's horrible, um, but it'll work. Uh, maybe I'll just draw in a few instead of completely randomizing it. Ah, uh, yeah, that'll that'll be just stanky enough for me. We'll put a little bit of a little bit of some filter envelope on it. All right, so that's got a proper stank on it, I think. Um, we'll give a little bit of portamento, too. All right, so what I want to do is I want to actually take that matrix pattern, and we're going to put some regroove on that. So in order to do that, as I said before, we, we can't... Yes, Ed, it is proper stank. That is trademark from me. Thank you. Um, Beardy Stank, yes. I think Beardy Stank would be a new genre. I think I'm, I might start that. Beardy Stank. Yeah. Thanks for that one. All right, so we're going to take the matrix, and I'm going to right-click on that. 
And this is where we're going to actually create or copy that matrix pattern to a track. When we look back here in the sequencer mode, and we're just going to hide the regroup for a second here. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Did you take care of, uh, make sure you take care of getting the proppy cop proper copyrights for me on that uh, Beauty Stank 2011. That, that works for me. But then I can't shave my beard. What am I going to do there? For those of you who don't know or may have joined late, yes, I do have a beard. See? All right, so we'll go back here. Um, all right, so I've got that matrix pattern. And I'm just going to drag that up to the subtractor. And then we can just remove the matrix sequencer track. We don't need that anymore. Just delete that and the device. Uh, that's because we just copied that onto the subtractor. So now it's just kind of... You know, there's a, the, the, the drums are grooving, but the bass is real vanilla again. So we're going to take the bass, we'll solo that out, and apply that same groove to the bass. I'm getting silly now. All right, so you kind of see what we're doing here. Um, using the regroove, extracted the groove from this loop right here, and then just applied it all the way across to everything else in the track. Um, just our drums and our, our little stank bass there. Um, I think I'm going to save this little thing. This this is fun. Why not? And we'll call it call this one. Beardy stank. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just check and see what you guys are doing over here on the chat. Right. So what are we looking at here? We are at 354. Um, see much got a little bit more time here. Maybe I'll take one from I'll take one from the from the crowd here. Beat Freaker says, "Can you make a sample in an NNXT or NN19 wobble with the LFL filter and filter frequency from Thor through the first filter?" Um I think what you're asking <coughs> excuse me is Running, you want to run the sample from an NNXT through Thor's filter, but you want to go through filter one instead of filter three. Um, I believe that's <laughs> yes, it's burp step. Um, I believe that's what you want to do. Um, you you can do that. I mean, you can run it through filters one and two. And I actually did. I did a uh, a fifty two tips series on using Thor's filters where I showed you how to use filter three um, as because it's the, the reason I, I show you to use filter three is because filter three is always on filter one and filter two are per voice filters um, I know I don't have a buzz yet Jay, Jay Foster I'm still working on one Guinness so unfortunately that's uh, that's that's not going to do it for me not with all of my poundage I need about five or six many beers before I get a buzz. Um, so we're not there yet. I'm merely, I'm merely calm after dealing with lots of children for the day. So let me, let me explain what I'm talking about there. So if we look at the Thor, and when you route something into the audio inputs, let's just say we were to take, I don't know, the subtractor's output and route it towards the audio input here. Um, and we routed that audio in. Da, 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 say audio in one, and we routed that into filter input one. 
and we're just going to turn off the analog oscillator so that you know that you're not hearing it. And, and I'm going to solo these two tracks so you're only hearing the Thor and the subtractor. So right now, I mean, we're, we're not hearing anything, right? I mean, the audio is coming in. We know that it's coming in, and we know that this is being triggered by notes, right? You can see that there. Um, but we're not hearing it. I mean, if I were to go into filter three, we know that it's working, and I can go into filter three left input, and, and, and you're hearing it, right? All right, so we know it's going in, but we're not hearing it when we go into filter one input. And that's because both filter one and filter two, you don't hear them unless you actually trigger a note on the Thor. You actually have to have a note triggered in order for those filters to be heard because those are per voice and they get they get routed in through the amp section and the amp section is only triggered when you actually play a note on the keyboard. Now there's two ways that you could go about this. One could, could be uh, making a sequence pattern here that just triggers notes on and off. The other is if you're just using LFO, if you're not using LFO 2 for anything, you can just route LFO 2 into the gate input here and do it at a really high rate. So, so now we're actually hearing it, right? Oh, and uh, yes, by the way, I am in stereo because I am not going through Skype. I'm actually going, I am I am the moderator and the transmitter here. So because I'm the master and I'm transmitting through Ustream, I can go in stereo. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm going to cover any mastering patches because the quality is still low quality. Um, so we really can't do that. Um, <clears throat> it would kind of be... Uh, counterproductive as I've said before but so that so I hope this answers your question so in order to run that into the low pass or into filter one or filter two you have to be triggering Thor um, so now that you've done that if you wanted to make this sucker wobble then we could just take let's say LFO one and route it to filter one's frequency Now, the only difference, the only issue that we're going to have here is that since it's getting triggered by a, um, since it's getting triggered by an LFO, this actually isn't going to work very well. What I'd probably do in this case is just create another Thor and use its LFO out to output to be the wobble. Um, but, you know, I digress. We could go on forever with that. But that's, that, I hope that answered your question, that, uh, that's going to allow you to use low pass, uh, excuse me, I keep saying low pass, filter one and filter two. They are per voice filter. So that's the only way that you can do that. Right. And uh, anyone who samples this video later, you must clear that with me. I do want those samples. <laughs> All right. So we, I think, I mean, I mean, we've covered a number of topics. Um, I think we've covered some pretty fun stuff. Um, I don't know that we went into some really deep stuff. Uh, I think I kind of went more surface here. I didn't want to go too crazy and, and melt your brains. I know Kurt's done a bunch of that, and you've had a bunch of other guys here in the sessions uh, melt your brains a bunch. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to go completely without melting. So let's, um, let's look at something at least something that maybe can melt your brain. Um, da, 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 da. I'm trying to think what I've got here. Let's see, we're towards the end, so now I'm gonna get into uh, straying from the path, which could get interesting. Um, excuse the names of some of my songs if you see any expletives. Sometimes it just happens. Uh, da, 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 glitched beat, I don't know. Uh, uh, custom effects. What do we got in there? No, 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 no. Oh, this was an interesting thing. Um, there's something that, uh, you know, everyone who uses flange, we have a flanger device inside of Reason. It's been in there for, for a while. And um, one of the things that I remember is actually doing tape flange. Uh, back in the day, uh, I, I had worked with tape, old 
reel to reels and whatnot. whatnot. And um, I really like the sound of tape flange. I mean, the whole the whole process of actually moving the head back and forth was was far out. You know, it was pretty interesting stuff. So I wanted to try and recreate that um, by actually doing a true sort of tape flange or, or, or moving things back and forth. And and you can't you can't do it with this method where it actually modulates, but you could do sort of like a stuck flange where it actually would be a stuck at a certain point. Uh, or you could record it, and that's actually what I did. So if you look at the, the sequence here, um, I'm going to mute this out and you just hear what the draw what the original song sounded like right now. All right. So that's not actually flanged yet. So what I did is I wanted to take that song and uh, yeah, it does sound very Caribbean, doesn't it? Um, so I just bounced it out into a track here. And then what I did is when I, while the song was playing back, I set that up, this master section, I let it play back along with the rest of the song that's here. So if you listen to it. And then what I did is I actually moved the position of this back and forth while it's playing. So we'll just let this loop. Oh wait, excuse me, not like that. Uh, doing it this way. Um, hang on a second, where is that? There we go. I wanted to look at this section, not the edit mode there, but this. Hang on a second. Go in some edit. Where are you? There. Yes. Thank you. All right. So what I did is I basically just moved, while this was playing, I moved this song back and forth. And the result actually was this right here. So it's more of a sort of like a stuck flange. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Sorry, I was totally way off there. So what I was doing actually was, it's, let's look back here. I'll show you a better example. So when I go to the master section bounced, while this is playing back, and I look at this section right here, for example. So there's a recording offset. So while it's playing back, and we'll just loop this section. So we'll loop it from here to here. And while it's playing back, I just double click on the actual selection here. And so what you're doing is you're actually moving the recorded material back and forth. So you get this really interesting sort of sound, this flange type sound by just messing around with what's playing. So that's kind of the vibe that, that I was looking for, to get that sort of like real time playing around with flange. It's obviously a much more difficult way about, of going about getting a flange than just using the uh, chorus and flange device. But it, I don't know, it was just a totally different feel for me. Um, 
something different, something a way to play around with audio files in real time. And, and what I did is, in order to record it, you actually, by going out to the audio track, so you create a new track, and you use the you use that source or, or, or the master output, you use that as a source for an input on another track. So when you're going to record on, let's say, this track, you actually set the master section. I set that as, a, as an audio file and set that as the record source here. If you never use that in record, you set that in record source. And then on the new track where you want to record, you select that, in, that as your input. And now when you record on that track, you, you're moving that master section back and forth, and that gives you that interesting sort of like shift in time. Um, so that's a, that's a fun thing. <laughs> all right, I think uh, that's all I'm going to have time for today. Um, let me go back over to uh, my little facial view, if, if you will. And I think that's kind of be all the time I'm going to have for today because I have, unfortunately, have to get back into... Uh, the fam. But um, I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me here on the session. And please feel free to send me any emails. Uh, uh, any of the files that you want from this session, not the beats that Chris programmed, but the um, but the, the bass sounds or the noise or stuff that I, I programmed, if you want, I'll, I'll send that along. Just send an email. Um, and maybe, I don't know, it's up to Chris if he'll send the, the actual Noisia beats there. Um, but I want to thank you guys for spending the time with me and look forward to seeing y'all again. I actually have to finish a video um, for this week on sampling everything in your house for sounds. So I've got to work on that actually now. So um, thank you guys. And I appreciate you being here with me. And I'll see you all very soon. Bye.